Let's review addition and subtraction of fractions finally. The hardest of the four operations is to add and subtract. You, it requires the use of a least common denominator, and so one of the ways I ask people to try to remember which one requires the use of a least common denominator, is it adding and subtracting, or is it multiplying and dividing? And I, I say to you, would you think of it as the one that arithmetically, when you were in first grade, second grade, and just learning to add 2 plus 3 to get 5, that was easier than it was to multiply and divide. Adding and subtracting fractions, however, is harder. So it's the harder one um, as fractions go. It's the easier one as just whole numbers go. If I were to add 1 fourth and 1 third, I have to look at the two denominators, the 4 and the 3, and find a common denominator. That common denominator includes the factors of these denominators. In this case, the factors of 4 are 2 times 2, and the factors of 3 are just 3 times 1. And because there are no re repetition, there's no repetition in terms of these common prime factors, I need to use them all. The common denominator for this is 12. I'm going to write that off to the side here. The least common denominator is 12 because it is represented by 2 times 2 times 3. What I need to do next is I need to take um, each of those fractions and multiply them by the number 1. So the fraction 1 fourth it has to be multiplied by the number 1 in the form of 3 over 3, so that it will become, in the numerator, this will be a 3, and in the denominator, 4 times 3 is 12. And I have created what's called an equivalent fraction. The fraction 1 third needs to be added to this, and I want it to have the common denominator of 12. So I'm going to multiply that fraction by 4 over 4. Again, I'm multiplying by the number 1, the numerator here will be called 4, and the denominator here, when I multiply those together, will be called 12. And when I go to add those together, I can now successfully do that. And when you add fractions, you only add the numerators. So there's 3 twelfths and 4 twelfths. The 3 plus the 4 is the 7 over the common denominator of 12. Likewise, if I were to subtract fractions, I would um, have to get a common denominator as well. And the fraction I'd like to look at now is 11 twelfths minus 3 eighths. And another way to find a common denominator is to take these denominators and list them as multiples. So take the number 12 and add 12 to it, and you get the number 24. So that's a multiple of 12. And add another 12 to that, and you get 36. That's another multiple of 12. You would do the same thing with the number 8. You'd add 8 to itself and get 16. And add 8 again and get 24. And possibly add 8 again and get 32. But what you're looking for is when these two values share a common multiple. In this case, that multiple is 24. Um, I could also have broken those into their prime factorizations and taken the prime factors the greatest number of times they occur in any one of the denominators. Let's continue, though, with this problem. I'd like to get that 12 to become a 24. I want it to have that common denominator, so I need to multiply it by the number 1, and that's in the form of 2 over 2. And that fraction will become 22 in the numerator over 24 in the denominator, because 12 times 2 is 24. Don't reduce that. You're, you're creating this on purpose. The fraction 3 eighths, you're going to multiply it by 1 in the form of 3 over 3, because that's equal to 1. Its numerator will be called 9. Its denominator will be called 24. And you are now able to subtract those two because they have a common denominator. You will subtract their numerators. 22 minus 9 is 13 over that common denominator of 24, and you're all done.